So in this video I want to discuss the idea of improper integrals. And improper integrals sound complicated, but they actually aren't so bad, although of course we do have to be careful at times. So what I want to do is to start off by noting that improper integrals are always definite integrals. So we should look first of all at what a definite integral is. And we have the following interpretation of a definite integral. So we have our curve, the integrand, the function which we later want to integrate. And if we sketch our curve, and if we then want to integrate the function from some lower limit of integration to an upper limit of integration, and on this graph I've rather arbitrarily said that A is here and B is here, then our interpretation of a definite integral is that it is the sum of any areas between the curve of the integrand and the x-axis, so that's this area here, plus this area here, because this area is also between the curve and above the x-axis, so we have a1 and we add a3 to it, but this area here is below the x-axis, and therefore we subtract this area to obtain the total result for the definite integral. So just to mark these things in colour, this area here is A1, this area here is A2, and we have to subtract that area from the definite integral because it lies below the x-axis and finally this area here is a3 and because it's above the x-axis it's positive. So that's our basic understanding of a definite integral and the question that we want to address in this video is what happens if the area is unbounded so these areas are all obviously finite. They lay within a restricted area, so that must be a finite number. This again must be a finite number. This must be a finite number. And if our area is unbounded, this is what we call a, an improper integral. So these are improper integrals if they are unbounded. The example sketched here is clearly a proper integral because the areas are bounded. So on the next slide I want to sketch some examples of improper integrals. So there are different ways in which we can get an improper integral. There are different ways in which our area can be unbounded. And one of the ways is the function that we are integrating, the integrand, can itself be unbounded in the range of integration. So let me just sketch um, an example of that. So here are our axes. And let me sketch, for example, the function y is 1 over x. Then if we were to integrate this from, let us say, here, let us say we were integrating from minus 3 to 0, then as x approaches 0, the function becomes unbounded, infinitely large and negative is what it's approaching, and this area here, that I'm just going to shade in, is not bounded. So the area is unbounded and the integral from minus 3 to 0 1 over x with respect to x is an improper integral. So any function where as you integrate 
over your integration range, as we've done here, where it diverges either at the end or in the middle, is an improper integral. So similarly, if I was to integrate 1 over x, say from minus 3 to 3, that would also be an improper integral because it would diverge here and here in the middle of my integration range from minus 3 to plus 3. A divergence here, a divergence here. The function is unbounded, the area is not obviously finite. So we see a key message. If you sketch your integrand and it is immediately obvious from looking at it that your area is finite, then you have a proper integral. If it potentially diverges, as we see here, then you have an improper integral. So that's one example. There is another way which the function could be an improper integral, and that is that not necessarily that the function diverges, but that the range of integration can be infinite. So let's look at an example of that on the next slide. So here's an example of the second sort where the range of integration diverges. And the integral that I'm going to look at is the integral of e to the minus x integrated with respect to x from 0 to infinity. So we can sketch our integrand and at x is equal to naught here we have e to the minus naught, e to the naught is 1 so it crosses the y-axis at 1 and our integrand drops down and down and down and looks something like this so this is y is e to the minus x and Although this is always decreasing, and it decreases quite quickly because this is exponential decay, although that is happening, it never ever crosses the x-axis. And it's important if you're sketching a function like e to the minus x to make sure that your sketch never crosses the x-axis. So this definite integral, its value is equal to this area here. It's above the x-axis, so it's clearly going to be positive. And when we look at this, we see that this is not bounded. It never, ever crosses the x-axis. This area extends out forever, with the top of it approaching the x-axis ever more closely. So here we also have an improper integral. And when we look at our two examples, this one and the integral of 1 over x um, between minus 3 and 0, what we will find, if we're a little bit more precise, as we'll see in a moment, is that the integral on the previous slide diverges, it's not finite, but that this integral is actually finite. So we have here the interesting case of an area here above the x-axis so we really can interpret this integral as an area where you could shade it in with a finite amount of ink because the area is finite but to draw this line you would need an infinite amount of ink because it goes on forever and never touches the x-axis so as we will see in a moment this integral is finite now what I want to do now is to calculate this integral to start off with and to do that I'm going to introduce the technique that we should use to calculate all improper integrals. And the key message, the technique we're going to be using throughout this, this video is that we define improper integrals via a limiting procedure. So that's the key message that we're going to be using throughout the rest of this video and it's what we always use to define improper integrals. 
So on the next slide, I'm going to calculate this integral, which refers to this, using a limiting procedure. So let's just remember what it is that we're going to be looking at. Here is our integral, the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus x integrated with respect to x. So we integrate from here right out towards infinity over all positive values of x. And this is our integrand, the function we're going to integrate. So graphically, the result of our integral is going to be this area here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, let our integral, which I've called i, be understood as the integral from naught out to a, some positive value that I've marked here. And it's the same integrand. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit as a approaches infinity. So in other words, we're going to integrate out to here, and then having carried out the integral, we will allow a, this upper limit, to go out towards infinity. So now what we do is we just calculate the integral for a finite value of a. This is, of course, a proper integral because a is finite. It's only going to yield the improper integral as we take a to infinity at the end. The integral of e to the minus x is minus e to the minus x. It's straightforward to check that by differentiating it. If you differentiate minus e to the minus x, you bring a minus sign down from the chain rule, so you get plus e to the minus x, which is the original integrand. So that's correct. And we evaluate this between naught and a. So what we have here is the limit as a approaches infinity of minus e to the minus a that's from our upper limit and then we subtract this result everything in the square brackets evaluated at the lower limit which is naught and it's helpful it's good practice to put this in round brackets, so we subtract whatever is here evaluated at the lower limit. That's where we're less likely to make minus sign errors. So we have here minus, because of this minus sign, e to the minus naught, and e to the minus naught is e to the naught, which is just 1. So what we have is the limit as a approaches infinity of, and now let's just tidy this structure up a bit, we have here minus minus 1, which is plus 1, so I'll write that first, and then we have to subtract from it e to the minus a, but e to the minus a means 1 divided by e to the a. So this is the result for our proper integral out to a, and now we can take the limit as a approaches infinity. So now we take the limit. And I'm going to make myself a bit of room to do that. So what we find in this way is that our integral, our original improper integral, is going to be 1. And that's not changed as a changes. But then here we subtract from it 1 divided by e to the power of a. But as a becomes larger and larger, e to the a becomes larger and larger. So 1 over it becomes smaller and smaller. And this is going to approach 0 as a approaches infinity. So we get 1 minus 0, which is 1. So therefore we conclude that the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus x integrated with respect to x is 1. And our result is positive, as it must be, because our integrand always lies above the x-axis. 
so that's a good check. And it is also, perhaps slightly more surprisingly, finite. And, as I said before, the area here is not bounded as you go this way, so therefore this is an improper integral. And yet, we've seen it is finite. So on the next slide, I'm going to calculate another example of an improper integral, and we'll see that they're not always finite. So the next example I want to look at is the integral of 1 over x from minus 3 to 0. So what it's helpful to do is to sketch our integrand. And I'm interested in the range of x values where x goes from minus 3 to 0. So here I'll say is minus 3. And 1 over x over this whole range of integration from minus 3 to 0 is going to be negative. 1 over a negative number is negative. So I'm going to get something that looks somewhat like this. I'll carry on the y-axis down a bit. And our interpretation of this is that it's going to be this area here, where I start off drawing the line x is minus 3 down until it meets my curve, and then I sketch it and I get this. Now this is clearly an improper integral because it is not bounded as x approaches 0. So our function that we're sketching is y equals 1 over x, that is of course the integrand. So we see again that this is an improper integral. So again, it's clear what we should do, I think. We're going to have to define this as a limit in the same way. The problem is as x approaches 0. So what we're going to do is to say that our integral, the integral from minus 3 to 0, 1 over x dx, is defined as the limit as a approaches 0 of the integral from minus 3 to a of 1 over x with respect to x and here I can choose this to be a. Now at this stage I can do one of two things I could say that a is approaching 0 from below, in other words that means that a is negative as we see here, or I could actually be a little bit more explicit with my minus signs, and why don't I do that, I could say that this is actually from minus 3 to minus a, and here we have minus a, and then a is approaching 0 from above. So a itself is positive, but here we have minus a. So now we can calculate this integral, and we leave taking the limit till the end. So we have the limit as a goes to 0 from above. And the integral of 1 over x is the logarithm of the modulus of x. So we have the logarithm of the modulus of x, and this will be evaluated between minus a as our upper limit and minus 3 as our lower limit. So this gives us the limit as a approaches 0 from above of the logarithm of the modulus of minus a so that is going to be the logarithm of a since a is positive and small, as we'll see in a moment, minus, and then we evaluate this with x being minus 3, so that is the logarithm of the modulus of minus 3, so that is the logarithm of 3. So now what we can do is, well, there's two things. We could say that this is the logarithm of a divided by 3, but that's actually not going to help us terribly much, as we'll see in a moment. So we'll just leave it as it is, and we'll say we've calculated the proper integral from minus 3 to minus a. That's this area here, with a minus sign in front of it, because it's below the x-axis. 
And now let's just say we want to take the limit as a approaches 0 and let's see what happens. And I make myself a bit of room. So therefore, what we have is that the integral from minus 3 to 0 of 1 over x with respect to x is, and now we want to take the limit in the first term as a approaches 0. But let's just think about what the logarithm is as a approaches 0. It's going to be minus infinity. So we're going to get a divergence and we're going to get minus infinity. And minus infinity minus the logarithm of 3 is still of course minus infinity. So therefore we say that the integral is divergent and the integral does not exist. diverges and does not exist. Notice by the way the minus sign and of course you would expect this integral to be negative because it lies below the x-axis. It's just that it also diverges in contrast to our previous example. So what I'm going to do on the next page is just to calculate one final example and then we'll stop the video. So in this example I want to look at the integral from minus 1 to 1 of 1 over x squared integrated with respect to x. And what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to be naive. I'm not going to look carefully at what I'm integrating I'm just going to integrate it quite brutally using the rules of integration. So what I would get if I do this is that i is going to be, well, the integral of 1 over x squared is minus 1 over x. Let's see if that's true. If I differentiate this, I have here x to the minus 1. I bring the power down. That will make it plus. I subtract 1 from the power and I would have x to the minus 2. And that's exactly what this means. So yes this is the integral of that. And I want to evaluate it between the lower limit minus 1 and the upper limit 1. So what I get therefore is evaluating first at the upper limit I have minus 1 over 1 which is minus 1 and then I subtract everything in the square brackets evaluated at the lower limit so that's minus and then it's 1 divided by minus 1 and 1 divided by minus 1 is minus 1 so that makes this minus positive so I get plus 1 and now putting all of this together I see that my result for the integral is minus 1 minus plus 1 so that's minus 2 and the key point I want to notice is that minus 2 is negative. And this should worry us greatly. Why should it worry us? Our integrand 1 over x squared is positive. So it makes no sense to say that our integral can be negative if the integrand is positive and our lower limit of integration is less than our upper limit of integration. So this must be wrong. And so the question is, where has our error been? And our error has been in not realizing that our integrand diverges in the middle of the range of integration. So let me just draw the graph of what our function looks like, and I'm going to draw it up here in the corner. So our integrand has the following form. It's always positive, so y is always going to be above 0. As x approaches 0, we're going to have 1 divided by something small and positive, so it's going to become large and positive, and it's going to fall down something like this. 
And this is, of course, an even function. 1 over x squared is even. So it's going to be a perfect mirror image about this on the other side of the y-axis. So this is y is 1 over x squared. And our integral was from minus 1 to plus 1. So therefore, our interpretation of this definite integral is that it is this area and this is clearly an improper integral and we've not taken this into account in our naive and incorrect calculation so the error our error was to neglect that the integrand diverged in the range of integration and that's why we got the wrong answer. So. On the next slide, what I want to do is to calculate this same example, but to do it properly and see what we get. So what we want to do now is to calculate this integral somewhat more carefully. So what I've started off now is by sketching the integrand, and we see that the integrand diverges as x approaches 0, either from below and also as it approaches it from above. So I've written down here minus a and plus a. I could give them different names, but it doesn't make any difference. And as a approaches 0, this will go to 0 here. And as a approaches 0, this will go to 0 this way. So what we're doing is we are calculating the proper integrals, this one and this one. And these proper integrals in the limit that a approaches 0 will give us our improper integral. So what we have is we will define the integral from minus 1 to 1, 1 over x squared, with respect to x, to be the limit as a approaches 0 of the integral from minus 1 to minus a of 1 over x squared integrated with respect to x plus the limit as a approaches 0 of and now from a to 1 of the integral from a to 1 of 1 over x squared with respect to x. So now what we want to do is to calculate these proper integrals and afterwards take the limit. So what we're going to get from our first integral is the limit as a approaches 0 and the integral of 1 over x squared as we just said a moment ago is minus 1 over x and this is evaluated between minus 1 as the lower limit and minus a plus the limit as a approaches 0 of and it's the same integral so we also have minus 1 over x and now from a to 1. So what we have is that the integral from minus 1 to 1 of 1 over x squared integrated with respect to x is going to be given by this plus this so it's going to be the limit as a approaches 0 of so here we have minus 1 over x we put the upper limit in first which is minus a so that's going to give us an overall plus 1 over a. So we're going to get 
plus 1 over a and then from the lower limit when we put minus 1 in here we're going to subtract and then we have minus 1 over x with x being minus 1 so minus 1 over minus 1 is plus 1 so we get here 1 and then from the second term from here we have again the limit as a approaches 0 of and again we put in the upper term first the upper limit so we put 1 into here so we have minus 1 over 1 that's just minus 1 and then we subtract everything in the square bracket evaluated at the lower limit so that's minus 1 over a and what we can immediately do is we can realize that this minus sign here and this minus sign here are going to give us overall a plus sign so I can make that plus and that plus so if we tidy this together we have the limit of 1 over a minus 1 and here we also have the limit of minus 1 over a sorry minus 1 plus 1 over a so actually we realize that this and this are exactly the same and that's just what we would expect it to be this integral has the same area as this integral so both of those terms should be identical that's something we should expect so what I want to do now is to make some room and then we can carry on and tidy this up so what we see is that our integral from minus 1 to 1 1 over x squared integrated with respect to x is going to be and as we've just said this term and this term are the same it's going to be 2 times the limit as a approaches 0 of 1 over a minus 1 and now we see that as a approaches 0 1 over a is going to approach infinity a is positive here a is positive here minus a is such so a is again positive so this will become very large and positive in fact it will diverge so this is going to approach plus infinity multiplied by 2 so that's just approaches plus infinity so therefore this improper integral does not exist. So what we've seen is that when we look at improper integrals we want to calculate them we have to view them as limits and we have to calculate them carefully otherwise we can get incorrect finite results and we've seen that sometimes these integrals can be divergent and also sometimes although the area is not bounded it can shrink towards an axis say so quickly that you can get a finite result and with that I'll stop this video